Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh. So this is third part of the marathon series. Uh, so till now we were doing the laws and even in this session we'll be doing the laws again, right? Tomorrow we'll be doing the RBI guidelines. So we are going to revise the RBI guidelines in the next sessions. My name is Ramandeep Singh and I have been teaching on bank exam study from last 12 years now and this is my WhatsApp number where you can ask your doubts if there is any in your mind, okay? So IBPS RRB scale to scale 3 2023 course 30 days pass is there on bankexamstudy.com that would help you in the interview preparation. Uh, you'll be getting video classes, notes, quizzes, test series, power capsule, superset in the interview preparation capsule in the course, right? Let me just hide myself so that you can concentrate on the content. Which of the following is not a provision under Banking Regulation Act 1949 regarding the appointment of directors of banks? So there is a proper RBI guideline related to that. But as of now, we are focusing on Banking Regulation Act 1949. So uh, no person can be a director for more than six years. So no person can be a director of a bank for more than eight years. That is a correct answer. Rest of the options it provides that at least 51% of the total number of members of ward should possess special knowledge or practical experience in banking or the finance. RBI can remove any director if it deems fit. The appointment of directors must be approved by shareholders of the bank. Okay, so these are the uh, certain conditions uh, that should be fulfilled uh, according to section 10A subsection 2A. Okay, let's move forward. That was a really important question. All the pointers are really, really important. Please remember that. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move forward to the question number 71. What is the difference between paid up capital and authorized capital? So paid up capital is the amount of capital that has been received by bank from its shareholder. So ye not just banking companies, any other company may this is applicable. A paid up capital is the amount of capital that has been received by bank from its shareholders while the authorized capital is the maximum amount of capital that, that the bank is authorized to issue. It's an authority hai, but they received uh, only paid up. Okay. So A is the correct answer. <clears throat> uh, certain guidelines are there according to section 12. Uh, in India, no banking company is allowed to carry on business in, in India if it satisfy unless it satisfies the following condition. Its subscribed capital is not less than one half of its authorized capital. So if its authorized capital is 100 crores, they must raise 50 crores from the shareholders. The paid up capital is not less than one half of the subscribed capital. Uh, so subscribe capital that the people subscribe to pay and paid up what they actually paid. Therefore paid up capital is the amount of capital that has been received by a bank from its shareholder while authorized capital is the maximum amount of capital that the bank is authorized to issue. So authorized capital is capital that is authorized to bank issue karne ke liye, while paid up is actually received. Kiya gaya hai. Hai? Subscribe capital, capital that uh, the shareholders have subscribed but not yet paid. Kuch part pay kiya, kuch nahi kiya. Which of the following is not a condition for appointment of the chairperson of the board of directors of a bank under Banking Regulation Act 1949? Which of the following is not a condition? The person must not uh, be more than 70 years, must be possessing. So 30 years of banking experience, this is not the correct answer. Sabhi ke 30 years ka banking experience nahi hai. The person not uh, have been convicted of any criminal offense. The person must have been a resident of India for at least 10 years. So 30 year ka experience ka koi funda yahan pe nahi hai. It should be at least 10 years of working experience in banking and the financial industry. This is the, uh, this is the condition. Uh, ye second wali galat hai. 10 saal ka experience chahiye, 30 ka nahi chahiye. Rest of the, uh, the options are correct. Okay. Under the Banking Regulation Act 1949, which of the following is not a ground for cancellation of banking license. 
failure to comply with the RBI guidelines, insolvency of banks, failure to maintain minimum paid up capital and reserve requirement. So these can be the cases. Ye ho sakte hai reasons. But non-submission of quarterly returns, uh, quarterly reports to the RBI, this cannot be a reason. Ye reason nahi ho sakta hai ki aap cancel kar do licensee bank ka. So this cannot be a reason at all. Okay. So non-submission of quarterly financial uh, reports of RBI is not a ground for cancellation of license. Uh, the RBI may cancel a license. What can be the ground? Kyun kar sakta hai? The company ceases to, uh, you know, ceases to carry on banking business in India. Banking business karna chhod diya hai. The company at any time fails to comply with any of the condition imposed uh, upon it under section one of the, you know, uh, under subsection one of section 11 or under section 22. The company fails to comply with any directive of RBI. The company is prohi uh, prohibited from accepting deposits as uh, ordered by RBI. The affairs of the company are conducted in a ma manner detrimental to the interest of depositors. Depositors ke interest mein nahi hai. I mean, usko hurt kar raha hai depositors ke interest ko. The company is unable to pay its present or future depositors in, in full. Depositors ke jo paise jama hai, wo poore wapis dene mein unable hai. The company is unable to pay its present or future depositors, whatever the money they have deposited, the company has wasted it, they did the fraud or whatever, they are unable to pay back the money. The company has, by a special resolution of its shareholders, decided to apply for its cancellation of license. Uh, deliberately, they are cancelling, they are applying to cancel their uh, license, they don't need the license anymore. The company has become insolvent or has been adjudged uh, to be an insolvent. They are insolvent. They are unable to pay off their liabilities. So that can be the case. Okay. Which of the following statement uh, statements uh, is true about the Banking Regulation Act? The Act provides for the regulation and the supervision of banking industry in India. The Act lays down. I mean, uh, this is a kind of, uh, you know, uh, open-ended kind of a question okay uh, so the act provides for regulation and supervision of banking uh, companies in India not the entire banking sector the act does not apply to cooperative society it's a very very uh, you know complicated kind of a question although it seems easy so the act doesn't apply to cooperative societies all the uh, although these are uh, you know kind of they conduct the banking business but it's not applicable to them the act does not deal with the issuance of currency notes. Uh, the act was enacted and enforced by Parliament, Indian Parliament in 1949, and it came in force in 16th of March 1949. And the act applies to all banking companies in India, whether they are scheduled commercial banks, non-scheduled, whatever, it's applicable. Which of the following statements are false about the statutory audit that every banking company has to undergo under section 30 of the Banking Regulation Act 1949. The statutory audit has to be conducted by the qualified uh, auditor who is appointed by RBI in the consultation with the central government. The statutory audit uh, has to be conducted by two auditors who are appointed by the RBI from a panel maintained by it. The audit has to be statutory audit has to be conducted in accordance to the standards and the guidelines laid down by the ICI. And the statutory audit has to cover all the aspects of the financial statements, operations of banking and reports uh, on its compliance with uh, various laws and regulations. The statutory audit has to be completed within four months from the end of financial year. So out of them, which of the, which of the are correct? Uh, which of these are false? The company has to conduct, uh, 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 the audit has to be conducted by a qualified auditor who is appointed by RBI in consultation with central government. I mean, this one is false. This one is actually false. Conducted by an RBI, uh, appointed by RBI in consultation. I mean, central government won't consult. I mean, won't give suggestions on these things, obviously. Which of the following statement is true by RBI that every bank has to maintain under section 17? So under section 17, the RBI, uh, the reserve fund is a percentage of net profit of a banking company that has to be transferred to a separate account before dividend is declared. This is under section 17. So it states that a banking company incorporated in India shall create a reserve fund 
and transfer to it a sum equivalent to not less than 20% of its net profit each year before any dividend is declared. Okay, so 20% of its net profit to the reserve fund. Which of the following statement is false about depositors education and awareness funds established under section 26A of the Banking Regulation Act. So the fund consists of the amount transferred by the banking companies from their uh, deposit accounts which have not been operated upon for 10 years. Uh, the fund is administered by a committee appointed by the finance ministry con uh, consisting five members. The fund is utilized for the promotion of depositors interest uh, and for such other purposes may be specified by RBI. The fund is audited by an auditor appointed by the RBI. The fund is exempt from income tax and other taxes. So which one is uh, correct? The fund is administered by the committee appointed by the finance ministry of five members. So that uh, one is incorrect. The committee is appointed by RBI consisting of seven members. The rest of the options are correct. Please remember them. The fund is administered by a committee appointed by appointed by the finance ministry consisting five members. Okay. So that's I guess all for today's students. I hope you like the today's session. Uh, in the evening, I, I guess uh, we are going to do the RBI circulars analysis, right? We, we, are, we are going to do the MCQs, right? So don't worry. I'll be doing all those for last six months. I'll be doing it once. So IBPS RRB scale to scale three GBO 2023 course is available on bankexamstudy.com. You'll be getting video classes, notes, quizzes, test series, power capsules, superset, everything and interview preparation guidance on bankexamstudy.com. Uh, 30 days pack is there. You can join the 30 days pack. That will be very helpful to you. Link is available in the description. Please check. Uh, list of our successful students, all these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. You can be one of them, actually. So that's all for today, students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.